Hey everyone, Single to Sean here, and today we're going to go over layout components in WPF, which is a really great way to reduce duplication in your XAML. So I have this project set up here, and let's go ahead and run this. And I just have two views here that I can switch between. And as you can see, these two views have the same exact layout, and that's actually reflected in my XAML. So I have this home view, and I have this about view. And if we look at these, here's the home view. Same thing, we got this grid set up. We have this border, which provides a little underline underneath our header. I have this rectangle, which is kind of meant to be like a logo in the header. And then I have my content down here. And same thing, go to the about view. Same thing as before, we got the header. And we have the rectangle logo and then the content. So I'm duplicating all of this XAML, and it was actually a pain setting up this demo because I would make changes on one of these headers, and I would have to do it in the other one as well if I wanted to be consistent. So what we need to do is create a layout component, and there's actually multiple ways to do this. So we're going to go over both ways. I'll go over the pros and cons, and you guys can choose whichever one you feel is correct. But e either one, depending on your use case, is pretty good because you're not duplicating. That's the main goal. So the first technique we're going to use is just a style. And what we can do is go into our app.xaml and we can define a style here that's going to take care of our layout. So let's set up a style and we're going to give it a key because we don't want to apply this style to all of the target type that we define. And I'll just call this page layout. And the target type is going to be a content control. Okay, so ideally what I want to do is use a content control instead of this layout so it'll look like this. We'll get rid of all of the layout specific stuff and I'll define a content control right here and I'll set the style to my page layout. Let's fix this ending tag and then I'll just pass in the content that I want to display and this content control is going to take care of that layout. So that's the goal. This is what we want. As you can see, we're not specifying the layout, so we get less duplication. So let's go into our app.xaml and set that up. So the property we need to set in the style is the content template. So we need to provide a full value in here. So let's specify it like this. So we can put some tags and define a data template. So this data template, if you guys aren't familiar with those, you can pretty much define anything you want in here grids, stack panels, any kind of control. So what we're going to put in here is our layout. So let's grab that. I got rid of it in the home view, but we still have it in our about view. So let's just grab all of this actually and move that into the data template and format that. And here we go. So we got our layout in here. Now we're also going to want to get rid of the content specific stuff. So all of this grid because this belongs to the about page and this is what we want to pass into the layout component. We don't want this actually in the layout. It's going to get passed in. And how are we going to use that content that we pass in? We can use a content presenter and specify the content as a template binding to the content that we pass into the content control. So that's perfect, and we also need to make sure that this gets put in grid row 1, like that. So let's go ahead and update our about view. We can knock out all of this, make this grid a content control, and set the style as page layout. And we don't need, we don't need this grid.row anymore either. And there we go. And another thing we could do is even move this margin into the layout as well. And that's like a personal choice. I mean, you might not want all of your content that you pass into this layout to have the same margin. You might want your individual views to specify the margin. So that's a choice that you have to think about. How much do you really want to put into your layout? In this case, I think I will add the margin. So let's get rid of it on all of our pages. And let's go ahead and run this and we should get the same result. And there we go, same thing as before. So that's great. The only difference is we're not duplicating that entire layout across both of our views. It's tucked away in the style. So styling a content control, that's one quick, simple way that you can create a layout component. 
However, the problem with this is that, well, it's all tucked away in my app.xaml in a style, and I could move it into its own resource dictionary and its own file so that I could see it over here and it wouldn't be all hidden. But then you'd have to merge in the resource dictionary in this application.resources, and that would be a pain. And another thing is since it's a style, when we use it, all we see is this content control. What I would really want, since this is like a layout component, is I would want this to say something like page layout, and then I pass in my layout like that. So how can we do that? How can we get away from using a style, define our layout in its own file, and use it like an actual control instead of saying content control? Well, the way to do that is by using a user control as your component. So let's create a new folder here. And this will be called components. And let's name this as a user control. Let's name it page layout. Okay, so now we have this user control and we can take the user control and same thing as before, we're gonna set the content template. And we can do this because user control inherits from content control. So now if we go into our app.xaml, let's go ahead and I'm actually just gonna copy this content template, not delete it because I'm gonna check this in the source control so you guys can grab this. So I wanna leave this here. And we're gonna set that right here as the content template. We gotta get rid of this because we're not doing it in the style. So all we actually need is the data template. Let's format that. And I'm not going to have any content in my user control. Instead, it's going to get passed in by whoever uses this page layout, and it'll get rendered inside this content presenter. So same thing as before, except we use it differently. So let's go into our home view, and let's import our components namespace so we can use our brand new page component. And let's get rid of that, and let's use our page layout like that so very nice and let's do the same thing in our about view as well and grab my namespace as well and there we go so now we get to say page layout don't have to specify a style and we get the same thing so that looks very nice so that's the benefits of using a user control instead it kind of looks cleaner in your XAML but that's not the only benefit okay this one is really good so let's say I want this header right here so I have this header on both pages let's say I want that to be part of the layout so what I would want to do is say on the home view I would want to set the header right here to be home and then my layout would take care of this text block right here and pass in this header as the text right here so I really wouldn't have this at all and actually I wouldn't have any of this either and I would just be specifying my content in here so like all of this so that's like a lot of duplication to get rid of let's let's try and get this so how would we do this well, let's go into our page layout and now that we have this in a user control we have this CS file along with it and we can define dependency properties so let's define a dependency property for the header that we want to pass in so this is called the header property. It's going to be a string. And the owner class, of course, is our page layout. And we'll give a default value of an empty string. And that's actually all you have to do to set up a dependency property. I use this handy dandy prop DP snippet. Hopefully your Visual Studio has that. Mine had it built in. And we now have this dependency property. So now back on the home view, as you can see, we can set the header to whatever we want. So now we need to actually use this in our page layout. So what I'm going to do is go into our about view and let's move this grid into our page layout. So we got this grid and this is going to be in the first row now. And our content presenter is going to be right here since this is the specific content for the page. This is for the about page, but we want this to be passed into the layout. So let's put that there. And this needs to be grid row one. And actually, we'll give it some margin two. We'll give it a top margin of 20. 
And now we have this text block here and we want this to have our header content that we pass into the control. So how are we going to get this? Well, we can't use a template binding because using a template binding is going to give us access to properties that this data template is going to be applied to. And this data template is going to be applied to a content presenter and content presenters don't have this header property that we defined. Our header property is defined on our page layout. So obviously we can't use template binding. Instead, we have to use a regular binding and we're going to bind to the header property. Where are we going to get this from? Well, we can get it by specifying an element name here and we'll call this element name root. And where is root? We are going to name our user control root. And of course, there's other ways to do this. You could use like relative source find the ancestor, but I find this is like the least amount of code and it's kind of easy to understand and read. Element name root, roots right here. So all is good. And now our header is going to pop up in this text block. So let's go ahead and update that in all of our views. So we got that in the home view and we need to update all of this as well. So let's get rid of this grid. We're only going to display the content no margin or anything, no grid row. And let's set the header as about. And we should be good to go. So let's give this a try. And there we go, same thing as before, except we have cut out a ton of duplication. And now all we do is specify our page layout. We can set a header on this layout. And then we just say the content that we want inside the page. So that is perfect. Three lines of code compared to all that nonsense we were duplicating before and we have everything tucked away in this page layout component and we can see it over here and the good thing about doing the user control approach is of course we can define these dependency properties and you can define tons of these say you wanted another one for like a description say this is your description then you could have a dependency property for that move that into your layout as well as like another text block but anyways no matter which option you choose whether it be a style or a actual user control component the main goal is you're getting rid of duplicating your layouts and you're saving yourself a lot of xaml and a lot of trouble down the road when you want to change a little specific part of your layout thank you for watching everyone if you have any questions criticisms or concerns be sure to leave them below in the comments section but other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.